Parker, expected approach time 34, approach button 17, the altimeter 29 or 9 or 7. Welcome back to the DCS World Sip Rip. I'm your host, Prickly Hedgehog, and today we'll take a little look here at Eagle Dynamics' latest informational release about the Dynamic Campaign Update, something we've been waiting for for quite a while. Before we begin, though, for those unfamiliar with Combat Flight Sims, they have, over the years, been typically released with some sort of Grand Dynamic Campaign. The aim is to give you some sense of being part of a massive theater and one in which your actions play a small or potentially significant part in that campaign. Falcon 4 BMS, by way of example, many of you may be aware of, or for those of you with longer memories, Digital Image Design's EF2000 campaign were such software packages built into the main game and provided hours of replay and fun. Now, ED have been toiling away on their own system for many years now, but details have been fairly thin on the progress and development of that particular system. It is not an easy undertaking, and in part, I believed it was always something that appeared that there were many things to address before such a campaign could operate properly within DCS World. Some of these I suspected were in part due to things like the game engine being able to run all the assets required, which is part of the core engine overhaul going on right now, and of course the reworking of the AI algorithms for such things as ATC, voice and scripting, among many other things. So these hurdles needed to be ironed out before, I suspect, ED was able to fully implement this particular system. The void has been filled by the numerous DCS community-produced linear campaigns and missions, Things like the built-in missions and campaigns that come with the game, and obviously some of the modules that you can purchase, as well as the paid-for campaigns from people like Baltic Dragon and Reflected Simulations. Now, these have been very, very well done and provide a high degree of realism and good challenges for single players looking for more from the game's basic immersive experiences. So what then has ED revealed with its Eagle Dynamics campaign engine here? They described that the EDDCE will be part of the DCS core, allowing the creation of special campaigns where air, sea, and land units do not have pre-created tasks, but are controlled by the strategic AI. Currently, the linear campaigns require triggers to generate events and responses, and if the player goes off piste, the trigger actually may not happen, and the mission can stall out, requiring a potential restart. The team advised that the campaign will initiate based on start conditions pertaining to posture, defensive or offensive, asset resources, and specific objectives which are created at the onset of each campaign design. Once the campaign begins, the strategic AI initiates the tasking order for air, naval, and ground assets for each unit in the science asset list, and therefore order of battle. The process will be ongoing during the campaign's duration as the AI allocates resources based on available assets, reinforcement, and resupply cycles. The good news, too, is that the player will be able to take control of any AI unit and participate in its mission task and or take indirect control over strategic AI decisions in addition to direct control over specific tasking orders. In other words, you as the player won't be totally reliant on dumb AI input to manage aspects of the battles that unfold before you during the campaign. ED described that the global structure of the campaign engine was completed in 2021. And remember, they've been pretty silent on this. We haven't really seen any information about this process. 2022 saw the team substantially fine-tune a lot of the system's individual components, such as the general scheme of ATOs being built starting from defensive combat air patrol operations along borders 
and moving through to include seed missions, uh, CAS, interdiction, and deep strike missions. The team have also worked to make sure ground units operate in a realistic fashion and will move in group fashion depending on tasking and tactical situation such as attack, defense, or transit modes. Now, I mentioned before about computer resources being taxed by the DCS core game engine, and ED have established a system that only fully calculates units that are visible to the player or see the player in visual or sensor ranges. This allows for more units in the campaign without overtasking the CPU, according to ED. Remaining units are calculated using lighter algorithms, they say, using pre-calculated data sets. The team have indicated this will also allow for the addition of upcoming assets and weapons that are going to be introduced in the game. We don't know specifically what they're referring to here in terms of those assets and weapons, but it's obviously very interesting news. Now, you will see units in their correct places while moving across the entire map, according to ED, but once you interact with various units, their normal DCS algorithms will come into play. This is pretty sophisticated number crunching, but will be utterly necessary, I believe, for the campaign to be playable, I suspect, especially right now, without the multi-core systems planned sometime in the near future, which will only help this particular type of number crunching. The team also mentioned that they added a new front line system, as they call it, which is a model for multiple front lines that allows for a more illustrative picture of breakthrough and encircling maneuvers. Tuning has occurred this year to fine-tune main engine elements, allowing for more automated campaign management and therefore dynamic situations to evolve in the campaign. Again, this is very sophisticated number crunching stuff and exciting to see. There's no word here on any release date for the dynamic campaign engine, but nonetheless, the information that they have provided remains the most specific that we've had about the campaign to date, especially in terms of specific features and what we can expect from them. As I said before, remember that they had completed a large portion of this back in 2021. It is extremely promising news, and I know many of you are regular askers about when we would see news about a dynamic campaign in the game, or whether it was just a pie-in-the-sky fiction from ED. As I said before, I think in monitoring ED's newsletters and information patterns for many years now, I had no inkling that the project was dead, but I suspected that it was a big one in terms of a project and that there were other impediments that needed to be ironed out before such a complex algorithmic product could be effectively introduced. Let's not forget that DCS has continued to evolve dramatically over the last few years as well with new assets, massively improved visuals and weather, and the growth in the, the broader player base in the game. We're seeing an increase in modders and third-party modules as well. I suspect that the introduction of the campaign engine will be a huge hit with solo players looking for more immersion and less predictability from the current linear campaigns. However, we are seeing some standalone campaign designers like Reflected Simulations producing campaigns with a focus on training fundamentals, which I know a huge number of players are looking for in order to improve their basic flying skills. Something very difficult to do without some guidance and tuition. Many players like myself really enjoy the fundamentals associated with formation flying and coordinated flying with other real players, which is second to none in DCS world right now. That, however, might be the subject of a separate video and as a discussion point. At this juncture, we will have to wait more information from ED on the progress on the edge or ed c e system nonetheless the information thus far is extremely promising for those of you eager to see if it comes to life in the sim let me know what you think in the comments section below Выпусти шасси. In other news, ED reminded us that their Christmas sale is still on until January 8th, and it should be noted that there is a rare 50% discount on the following aircraft, the Mosquito, the Hind, the F-16, the Hornet, and the Supercarrier. Now, you'll be foolish not to grab one of those aircraft if you're in any way inclined. The Hornet and the Supercarrier are a perfect dual saving, I must add. 
Now, also of note were a series of in-depth videos from Burundus and Falcon in a pre-flight walk around recently of the Kiowa, which was a welcome look at this module, which has been a long time in development and unfortunately had seen some setbacks over the last few years. We're all looking forward to seeing its release in the game in the near future, hopefully, where it will join the fattening hangar of helicopters in the DCS World Stable right now. It's been exciting to see several former helicopter pilots like Casmo, Schoolio64, and more recently Snackpack, among others, providing us expert tips and information about flying these complex machines appropriately. I've really been enjoying a series by Brad Mix, Flight Related Things, that is the title of his YouTube handle, and where he has been focused on the Apache. In short, we really are spoiled for choice for learning in DCS World if you can hook into the right information set out there on YouTube. Unfortunately, there are some garbage ones out there, so be discerning, look around. Uh, if you have somebody that you respect for choices, for proper information and realistic information, um, check out the Air Warfare Group, and of course myself, I try to promote the most realistic people that I can that I know will be helpful to you if you are embarking on your career as a DCS sim pilot and are wanting good information. Now stepping back into a different era here, Magnitude 3 provided some more pics of their ongoing World War II Corsair aircraft, but at this time we're still in the dark about any release date. Nonetheless, the pics look pretty cool. This module will also include assets, including the SX class aircraft carrier, I believe a format that established the design philosophy for carrier platforms for many years to come and established the carrier task force as a center for American naval firepower. I remember my grandfather at the Royal New Zealand Air Force, who was a staff sergeant, post-World War II, he was invited onto an American carrier which visited New Zealand in the 1950s in Wellington Harbour. The ship was only able to dock at high tide because it was so big through the notorious entry into Wellington Harbour. And my dad, who was just a kid at the time, uh, record being shown around and experiencing a real American coffee, which was something of a rarity in New Zealand at the time, given the British colonial preference for just tea, thank you. Now, there are a swag of mods and third-party modules floating around at the moment, and I have been requested to do a formal update covering all of these by several of you over the last few weeks. That's on the cards, if time allows. I will say that just a few weekends ago, by way of example, the Swedish team at BAAS released their first free mod. This is the SK-60, which is a twin-seat aircraft, and it looks really, really well done. And as I said, enjoys a growing number of independent and free mods from the professional community groups out there putting a lot of work into recreating some niche aircraft and some not-so-niche market favorites. Some of these are highly unlikely to ever see official status because of the secrecy surrounding their complex electronic suites but it's cool to see people attempting to recreate these and allowing us to have a little dream of what it might be like to fly those aircraft. Uh, one such aircraft of course uh, Juice from the Air Warfare Group put out a video about the T-45C uh, Goshawk which is based on the British Hawk trainer. It is a two-seat naval aircraft and it is a trainer allowing uh, crews to practice landing on the boat although this is becoming something of a thing of the past according to a recent video from Ward Carroll on how naval avi aviators are currently trained nonetheless uh, it was an interesting video and it highlights just how complex it is to bring these aircraft into the game where groups are really trying to showcase their wares and are producing some pretty professional modules that rival some of the paid for versions that we're seeing and as we saw with the MB339 from India Fox Echo, they had a free mod in the game for many years before they went full fidelity with the MB339. So there's a lot of cool things going on amongst the community right now that are very, very exciting for us to experience. Let me know what you think. Well, speaking of think, I think that brings us to the end of this week's video. Another DCS sit rep comes to an end. Thanks for putting up uh, with me for a little bit of a break. I have been tinkering with the Black Shark, but I haven't really had a lot of time to do, to do other things. I needed a little bit of a break to spend some time with family who were in town, etc., etc. Uh, with regards to the channel, we almost uh, made it to 10,000 10, subscribers. We didn't quite get there. So if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support the channel further, please do so through the Super Thanks button or drop me 
a line in the comments section below. Thanks to all of those regular viewers out there of you. I uh, really appreciate the support this year. I'm looking forward to January 4th too, as that will be when ED releases their 2023 and beyond video, which are always fan favorites and always hint at little things to come. So keep your eyes peeled for any goodies that ED injects in there as they like to tease us. I think that'll do. Cheers. We'll see you next time on the DCS sit rep.